Most business owners consider themselves experts in their field, but if your website isn't showing up on page one for your products and services, Google doesn't see you as an expert, and neither does anyone else searching those terms. 97% of people who use Google never click past the first page because they assume the providers on page ones are the true experts. So if you aren't showing up on page one for each product or service that you sell and in each city that you want to generate customers from, you're losing millions of dollars to your competitors and you aren't even being considered as an expert or potential option to buy from for customers who are literally ready to choose a provider and make a purchase decision right now. Y'all ready for this? Now, every single day, my team and I speak with business owners who are experts in their field, like dentists who have been practicing for 20 years, plumbers who have had a family business for multiple generations, or attorneys that have worked with some of the largest and most prestigious law firms and are now ready to open up their own practice. And even my personal doctor, who I share a birthday with, and on June 10th of this year, when I turned 34, he turned 86. He's been practicing medicine for longer than I've been alive. These people are experts. But what do they all have in common? Well, it's probably something that you share with them. And let me know down in the comments if it is. And it's this. It's that they are true experts in their field, but not in the eyes of Google. They don't show up on page one. You see, you can spend your entire life practicing, refining, and honing your expertise. And although your friends and your family and your close community may see you as an expert, and you very well may be, Google doesn't see it that way. Not unless you put in the work to prove to Google you are an expert, just like you did in real life and in your community. And when you do, you get rewarded big time. So let me know in the comments below, is that you? Are you an expert in your field, but not showing up on page one and not being recognized in the digital world for being the expert you are? So what should you do? Well, when you send Google the signals and information it needs to recognize you as an expert authority in your field, it will reward you with showing up on the top of the first page for products and services you sell in the areas you serve. And it's gonna show it to people who are looking to buy them. That's what a search-based system is. That's what a keyword search engine is. They want something, you show up, boom, match made in heaven. And what happens is you'll flood your website with free traffic that needs surface providers because Google trusts you and it's listing you up there with the service providers it wants to send its traffic to. And until you give Google the right combination of signals, no matter how much expertise you build up in the real world, you will never be seen as an expert in the digital world, just like my doctor who has been practicing medicine for longer than I have been alive. And all of those buyers who need your expertise, need your products, need your services, and are looking to buy, they're gonna get shuttled right through your competitor's doors and completely skip over you. So I'm gonna give you a simple three-step process you can use right now to set yourself up for becoming a recognized expert authority and industry leader in the digital world and get Google to send you free traffic of people who are looking to buy the products and services that you provide. And for the sake of this video, uh, I'm gonna use like an example of a dentist in Pasadena, California, but the exact same process will work for any business. And as a bonus, if you're having trouble following along and making it work for your business, if the analogy is just not quite similar enough, you can always click the link in the description below and join SERP University. It's a free group where I help out business owners every week with these exact types of questions. But I think this analogy is gonna to apply to pretty much everything and everyone, so stick with me here. So here are the three steps you can use right now. Step one, you need to identify your SEO competitors. And your SEO competitors are the websites that show up on the SERP, which is Search Engine Results page. They're those websites that show up when you Google your products or services plus the city which you provide them in. And when I ask business owners who their competitors are, they immediately think about like a couple of specific types of competitors that aren't always their SEO competitors. They might be rivals who have been in their industry a long time and you know, they just want to dethrone them. Dracaris. Or they sometimes mention competitors that provide a very similar product or service and of equal quality, which, you know, traditionally that's what a competitor is. But many times these aren't truly your SEO competitors and a surprisingly large number of businesses who have been around for 10 plus years 
they actually don't rank for the terms that could bring them seven figures of new revenue every year. They're just sort of sustaining off of referrals and their book of clientele that they've built up over the years. So many times your SEO competitors are names that don't initially pop into your mind as a business owner when I ask you that question. Many times they're businesses that have good SEO and might not even sell similar products or services, or maybe they do, but the business owner knows for a fact that these competitors, they don't provide as good of a service and they don't share the same expertise as you do. Does that sound familiar? Well, these people are still taking a big part of the market share and providing a subpar service to your community maybe cheap or poorly built products, maybe just a lack of expertise, and that's what your community is being served with. So for that reason, lots of business owners don't consider them to be true competitors because they don't offer what we offer or they don't do it as well as we do. But here's a lesson for you. If they're taking up space on the SERP for terms that could be bringing you business, they're your SEO competitor. So getting more buyers from search engines starts with identifying your SEO or SERP competitors. So you want to get a list of all these websites and it's very simple to do. First, you write down a list of all of your products and services. So using Dentist as an example, you might offer dental services like cosmetic dentistry, which could include porcelain veneers, teeth whitening, etc. You might offer orthodontic dental services like Invisalign or braces or I don't know, sleep apnea. You might offer general dentistry like teeth cleanings or fillings, cavities, maybe emergency dental care. Um, Maybe you offer dental implants, crowns, root canals, etc. Write a list of all those things down on a piece of paper. Whatever it is that you do, write that list down of services. And whatever it is that you offer, you can also put the main categories of those services above, kind of like the way that I just described, cosmetic dentistry and the sub-services, because these are all going to become keywords. So at the end of this exercise, which would only take you a minute or two, you should end up with a list. If you're a family lawyer, you might write something like family law, and then underneath that put... Um, divorce, child custody, child support, alimony, whatever. If you're a plumber, you might put plumbing and then something like drain cleaning, water heater repair, septic, etc. You get the point. Write down a list of your services and the categories they fall under. Next, write down the city that you're located in and all of the surrounding cities or areas that you would realistically like to provide services to. So if you're a dentist in Pasadena, California, and you know that people in your area will drive from 10 miles away, you might write down Pasadena, South Pasadena, Sierra Madre, San Marino, Arcadia, Monrovia, Temple City, Alhambra, Altadena, La Cañada, you know, the, sur the surrounding areas where you say, you know, in my area, I know people will drive about 10 miles to get to me and, and here are the cities and I'd like to provide services to people in those cities, ideally, right? So you're gonna end up with a list of cities. And if if your business isn't geographically restricted, like maybe you're an e-commerce company or you're a consultant that can provide services remotely, you can just skip this part about writing down cities and neighborhoods. So you're either going to have a list of all your services or you're going to have a list of um, all your services and all your cities. Let's say you end up with a list of three services and four cities. You have general dentistry, orthodontics, and dental implants. And you have Pasadena, Arcadia, Alhambra, and Glendale, let's say. So simply merge the terms together, pairing each service with each city, and you'll have a list of 12 primary keywords or seed keywords. And they'll look something like this. So this list is the list of terms that you need to be on page one for when somebody searches them. Because people out there are looking for these services and they're ready to buy them when they're searching these types of keywords. And if you show up, you are going to be considered as one of the top providers for them to shop from. And to find out if you are, you know, and to finish off step one of finding your SEO competitors, simply search these terms on Google and see who pops up. Write them down. The websites showing up on page one for each of these keywords will be the list of your SEO competitors. And most likely, your list is gonna be bigger than just 12, you know, service city combinations. But if you were to get on page one, even for just these 12 terms, your business would explode. You'd see an enormous amount of growth. So now that you know your SEO competitors after Googling each of those terms and writing them down, it's time for step two. And step two is to create your keyword silos. So right now you have a list of your seed keywords, but these aren't the only way people search for services. The beautiful thing about the English language is that there are many ways to say the same thing. And because of this, people type different things into search engines. We're also extremely lazy and don't like to write complete sentences. So we end up just smushing words together and hey, Every time you do that, that's a unique keyword search. And 
you want to be able to show up for all these. So instead of just having one parent keyword of a service, we're going to create a silo of the various ways that people can basically look these things up and what they're actually typing into search engines. And this part's optional. You don't really have to do this, but you will get more bang for your buck. So each unique word or phrase that someone types is its own keyword, and every keyword has an associated amount of monthly search volume, which simply means how many times is a keyword or key phrase being searched on Google each month on average. And we can find this information out using a keyword tool. So in step two, you're really just taking your seed keyword list and figuring out the other variations of how people are typing these things into search engines. So you build, uh, or when you build a specific page on your website around that service plus city combination, you can include these different ways that people search for the service and you'll show up more highly as a top provider to a wider range of people. And you'll simply get more traffic, more customers, more leads, more sales, and more revenue. So using one of the keyword tools that I've linked below in the description, drop one of your primary keywords into this tool and look at all the different variations that pop up. You can select these variations and you can copy them or you can export them as a list. Alternatively, you can also take one of your SEO competitors, put them into the tool and look at the keywords that they're showing up for and the keywords that they're getting customers from and add those to your list as well. And simply repeat this process for each of your seed keywords and your competitors and you'll end up with what I call keyword silos, which is really just a group of keyword variations that people are searching for when they're looking for a product or service that you provide. And that brings us to step three. Now that we know all the keywords that people are searching that have high buyer intent, meaning these are the things that they're searching for when they know their problem, they know their solution, and they're just looking for a, a provider. You want to make sure that you show up for these terms and the foundation for doing that, that I see nine out of 10 businesses miss, who we speak with on a regular basis, is that you want to have a page on your website specifically built around each of these keyword silos. And here's why. Google wants to show the most relevant search results when someone is typing something into their search engine because it's gonna provide them a better answer than showing them something more generic, right? If I wanna learn how to make buckwheat pancakes with bananas, I'm not gonna type in how to make pancakes. It's too generic. But if I type in how to make buckwheat pancakes with bananas, I wanna see a page that's about how to make buckwheat pancakes with bananas, right? So Google wants to serve the most hyper-relevant search results to somebody who's searching those terms. So you have your keyword silo and you wanna build out a page on your website for each of these keyword silos. And step three, it's really the easiest of all. If you wanna show up on search engines for valuable keywords that consumers are searching for right before they're gonna buy, the first thing you need is a dedicated page to that silo of keywords. You can't just have your homepage show up for all of this stuff. It, it makes sense in, in real life, you're like, well, they can just go to my homepage and, and you know, see what I do and call me, but that's not how Google works. You need an individual page for each thing that you do. And if you want it to be solely focused around that group or silo of keywords, otherwise it's gonna be really hard, possibly even impossible to show up for it. So build them out. And if you sit down and you follow these three steps that I've laid out, you will be setting yourself up for huge long-term success and huge growth from free traffic that you don't have to pay Google or Facebook or any other platform to get. Prove your expertise in the digital world just like you have in the real world. What does that mean? It means buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. And you can easily add seven to eight figures of revenue to your business each year. And if growing your business from free traffic is something that you're interested in and you want more actionable info about what you can start doing today to set your business up for marketplace dominance, check out my 100% free 51 page eBooks that walks you through our exact SEO process that we have used and refined helping grow thousands of businesses and generating hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue from free traffic for ourselves and our clients. You can get it in the description below, totally free, and you can follow along step by step. Also, you can join the 100% free SERP University Facebook group to get help with any questions that you might have that come up along the way. You can get advice from other experts, such as myself, my team, and other people that are in the group. You can network with successful business owners and just surround yourself with a community of entrepreneurs who are passionate about growth and building good businesses. Just click the links in the description below to get access to those. But before we go, I'd like to hear from you first. And if you want to see just how much money you're leaving on the table to your competitors, 
and learn exactly how to calculate the potential revenue from SEO or what your ROI would be if you decided to pay an agency to do it for you, check out the video right here on the side where I'm gonna walk you through and show you how to calculate this down to the dollar. And I think you'll be shocked when you see the potential from SEO. And you know what? Before you get started with anything, it's always a good idea to plan and understand, will this be an ROI positive decision for me? Because you're either gonna have to spend your time or your money, and you should know before you go in and start doing all that stuff if it's gonna be profitable for you. And in the next video, I show you exactly how to calculate the amount of money you're leaving on the table. I think your mind's gonna be blown.